Learning the technical aspects of oil painting was terribly exciting, but a difficult challenge. All of a sudden, one day, it sort of all pulled itself together. I woke up and said, Swanson, you're going to be an artist. It didn't take me long to realize that to be a good painter it took a 24-hour day commitment. This is the very place where Teddy Roosevelt got his first close-up look at these sheep in 1903. They've continued to migrate here, one of the few places they have ever had close contact with man. Even though Gary Swanson spends fully half his time back in that studio in Prescott, Arizona, for the rest of the time, you might call him an itinerant artist, a sort of paladin of the palette, whose motto is, have brush, we'll travel. That's because he goes to his subjects. To capture the excitement of the exact moment a bighorn decides to fight, or the hair-raising expression of a bull elk bugling on a crisp morning, takes a lot of field experience. A truly historical artist must know his subjects, but equally important, he must know them in their proper surroundings. It all has to fit together in a theme of exacting beauty. He needs this constant exposure to the animals in order to paint them as they really are, in their true colors and lights and shades. To get onto that canvas the very facial expressions and body language, even the wind effect and temperature. Right now, the 20 degree air and the wind stiffen the fingers and ruddy the face. But this is a rare moment. Now it's September, the same range, but lower down in the wooded valleys. Gary's friend, Don Laubach, sounds one of those challenging bugles of the bull elk. This is elk rutting season, a few short weeks when these silent ridges and valleys suddenly come alive with piercing calls. The bugle is a fighting challenge to any other bulls in the neighborhood. In the rut, the bulls are wildly aggressive, eager for a fight over cows or for any other excuse. This fellow here, for example, is right now sort of working out at the local gym. He is ready. Why don't you bugle one more time? Yeah. I think he's coming down that Aspen draw. Now the men are following a new sound. Each year in late winter or early spring, just after shedding the old ones, elk begin growing a new set of antlers. By August, the horn is fully developed, and the bull rubs his antlers against a young tree to scrape off the fuzzy protective coating, which is called velvet. The naturally white antler also picks up its stain from the tree's sap. All this does great harm to the young trees. Thus, we have one of nature's own methods of forest pruning. But for the bull, it's just another way of getting ready for a Donnybrook. Oops, I think we've been spotted. Better be quiet, I think. This is some of the antler velvet. Sometimes after days of just walking and looking and nothing happening inside, suddenly in one moment, it happens. Sometimes I'll get three or four ideas or feelings for paintings just like that. Some really burn into your mind so much that you can't forget about them until you get home and get back to work on them. 
Then the artist will start drawing sketches, making notes, jotting down the time, who he was with, colors, maybe even snapping some photos, everything that will later help recreate that special moment. super time of the year to be in elk country. You can bugle up a number of animals in a variety of scenes and continue to be getting new and better ideas for future work. The other times of the year, you may go for days and not see an elk. Wapatee is his true name, given him by the Shawnee Indians. A big bull weighs up to 700 pounds and can go to 900. When Europeans first set foot on American soil, the Wapatee was the most widely distributed big game animal. Got him angry. I hope not. Well, he's slightly irritated anyway. Couldn't be any closer than this. Hey, Gary, how many sketches do you need? Oh, just one more done. 